So we're solving log equations again. So this is for x, L is 8. All right. So this one, we're going to apply the log properties. So you know if you have a minus right there, you're going to have to rewrite the log as a division, as a quotient. So rewrite this log of w over 2 equals 2. Now we're going to rewrite this as the exponential function. So log without a base, that means the base is always going to be 10. So 10 raised to the exponent 2 equals the argument. So w over 2. 10 squared is 100. w over 2, multiply both sides by 2, you get w equals 200. Now we have addition here. That means we're going to multiply the arguments. So we write this. Log base 4 of 2v, or v2, it doesn't matter, equals 4. I like 2v. Now we're going to rewrite this in exponential function. 4 to the power of 4, exponent is 4, equals 2v. Four to the fourth power is two fifty six. Divide both sides by two. One twenty eight. Now, this one we're going to apply the property of equality. that states so the property of equality states expressions inside the logs are equal so the expressions inside the logs are equal so that means these two are equal to each other. So we can just make the log go bye-bye, and we are going to rewrite this as 4 equals 4w because expressions inside the logs are equal. Now we can just solve. Divide both sides by 4 because of this 4. w equals 1. So, so this one, we're also applying the property of equality that states the expressions inside the logs are equal. That means these two are equal to each other, so they can go bye-bye. Or it will be the same thing as if you are dividing both sides by log base 4. Now we're solving for v. Last one. This question I think I got when I was at 85-ish. So if you're going for an A, that's what you need to do right there. So again, property of equality. That means these two are equal. So they can simplify. So R squared minus 2R equals 3. 
minus 3 from both sides because this is a quadratic function. I'm going to solve this either by using the quadratic formula or factoring. I know factoring in this case was going to be way easier than using the quadratic formula, at least for me. I can easily tell that two numbers that multiply to negative 3 is 3 and 1, and the same two numbers that will multiply and that will add to negative 2, that would have to make my 3 negative to get a negative 3. And then plus 1, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Now I set each term equal to 0, plus 3 to both sides, minus 1 to both sides. So this one you have two answers, r equals 3, r equals negative 1.